This is part 9 the alternative ending to renovating a vintage twin tangy type model steam engine. I was going to put this engine away and not work on it and do something else. But unfortunately, I am a little bit obsessive. I don't mean OCD, just the O part. So I got up very early this morning, da -da -da -da, as the song goes, and I went into the workshop and started to dismantle the engine. The first thing I did was to fix the eccentric sheaves. I drilled and tapped them out to 4BA so I could get a 4BA screw in there to hold the eccentric sheaves tightly to the crankshaft. I was very concerned about the fact that the timing kept shifting, even though the eccentrics didn't shift very much, and when I looked inside the steam chest, this is what I found. A really badly made part. It's just a scrap of brass, which is acting as the adjuster for the slide valve, and it's not even threaded properly for the shaft. An easy fix, I threw away the offending article and made another one properly. And here is my version of the slide valve adjuster. And when I put the engine back together and fed some compressed air into it, you can see the difference and hear it. It's miles better. It's working as it should do. I thought I would tackle the repair of the two broken studs. I simply machined a couple of 7BA bolts, fitted nuts to them, cut them to size and pressed them into the cylinder cover with some Loctite 603. Although I don't like doing repairs like this, sometimes it is a necessity. By way of a short interlude, here is a top tip. This is superheated steam oil, and behind it in the bottle is some extra virgin rapeseed oil, rich in vitamin E and a natural antioxidant, as it says on the bottle. I'm adding this rapeseed oil to my superheated steam oil, and then adding some 3-in-1 oil just to thin it out a bit, because it is a bit thick and gloopy. After mixing thoroughly, I'm going to draw some off into a syringe and lubricate every part of the engine. Using rapeseed oil as an oil additive is not new. My friend the late Bernard Walker, who worked on the railways, said that they used to have a tin of what they called the special stuff in the superintendent's office. If ever the bearings were running hot on any of the locomotives, they'd go and borrow some of this to add to the oil. It makes the oil slipperier. And now I'm giving the engine a good dose of this special stuff. It's a great lubricating oil because it's quite sticky. It's not flung off by centrifugal force quite as much as the thinner oil is. And as you can tell by the sound of the engine now, this stuff really works. It will take a moment or two for the oil to work its way around all the moving parts. But the difference is quite astounding. The engine sounds a lot better. Another quick tip though, if you want to run in a very tight engine, do not add rapeseed oil, otherwise it will slow down the running in process. As this engine's been completely dismantled, as you've seen by the videos, now it's put back together, there are one or two tight spots that have developed. This is entirely normal. And I'm purposely running the main bearing top cap slightly loose. I'll nip these up once it settles down. Much as I enjoy working on model steam engines, this one has tested my patience somewhat. The design of it is just not strong enough to make a practical working model. Now, with the modifications I've made to it, which are fairly invisible, it's a lot stronger. The eccentric sheaves are not going to move, so the valve setting is not going to move, and the valve itself is not going to move, which was a bit of a surprise. And if I put my finger on the flywheel, there's a lot of resistance now. When I first powered up the engine on compressed air, there was nothing, there was no power at all, but with the new piston rings, and bearing in mind that I'm only running at about 25 pounds per square inch of pressure, this is a very powerful engine, and I hope it gives many years of pleasure to the owner. Time now to finish it off, and as you can see, once again I am painting, I'm painting the cylinder cladding. So that's it on this build once the paint dries. As for me, I'm going to check back into the asylum, call for the nurse, take my medication and have my dinner. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.